Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is only your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we look at the week that was, we can see that the market overall had a good week. Um, what's of interest to me is uh, the range that the market continues to be in. Um, and that's really probably what we're going to see as we see traders take the money out of the market. We're in our holiday mode here. People are just kind of go ahead and calculating their results for the year. Uh, but what happened, of course, this week is we had the big bounce on Monday with the coordinated Eurozone fiscal plan, uh, which brought much uh, money into the market. Um, so even though people were, are coming out of the market, uh, we have news that brings people right back on in. We also had the S&P downgrading several banks, especially the big boys, City Grain, Bank of America. Uh, nothing really on the corporate front. Uh, and then on Wednesday or was it Tuesday where we had the Fed and five other central banks agree to lower their pricing by 50 basis points on their liquidity swaps. Doesn't really change the situation as much as it changed uh, you know, uh, the liquidity of the market. And, and being uh, being able to uh, swap the uh, in the market. However, what was interesting as far as the economic was the fact that the November employment situation came in better than expected. Uh, unemployment fell to 8.6%. Um, could could it be the hiring for this holiday uh, move here? People hiring for the holidays uh, certainly could be, but um, under 9%. So we'll have to see. But overall, the market is still in a range. We'll look at that once we get to the charts. This week, we don't have any key earnings. And as far as economic data, maybe consider it on Friday. But again, what's important here is that we're always looking for catalysts. This week, we had an unannounced catalyst with the, again, coordinated uh, plan by the Eurozone to shore up their debt situation. Um, and I think they're even doing a legally binding uh, you know, a debt plan for the countries. Uh, Friday may be a catalyst uh, for the market, but as we sit in this range, we don't have that major news that's going to project us out of that range one way or the other. Let's go ahead and pull up the chart so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here we are looking at the S&P 500 on a daily chart. And we can see this range that I've been talking about. First, for several months, we stayed in between 1100 and 1220. And now we just extended that range basically up to the 200 moving average now holding up as resistance. And we're falling back. Now, what we talked about last week was when we looked back here in September and August, we saw that there were some wicks around 1150. And we said, if we break 1150, we're heading down 1100. Well, we never broke 1150. These buyers found value once again at that price level. And of course, again, we have our Eurozone news, the, the uh, coordinated fiscal plan that sent our market right on up. And once again, we're testing the 200 moving average where we failed uh, last month. Remember our great October month that we had? Uh, we failed to the 200 moving average and then we fell down in November. So now, as we start off December, uh, we put in a doji and an inverted hammer right here at the 200 moving average. So it still looks like it's holding up as resistance. So what we have to watch is this 1220 again. I know we're a ways away from that, but if we break 1220, then we have to think about 1150. Uh, our indicators are pretty much all in the middle, um, coming out of oversold, 
um, and it's hanging out in the middle, so we're not getting much there. Zooming out to the weekly, uh, we can see how nice of a week it was here. Um, and uh, we can see that the 200 moving average on the weekly held up as support. But once again, our indicators are in the middle. Finally, we go all the way out to our long term uh, view and look at our monthly. And we can see November, because of this last week, November really ended up being a hammer, uh, a doji. And we can see how December is starting off. So you can see how weak November was at one point in time, but this last week really allowed us to pair off those losses and made uh, November uh, a, a sideways month. Which means on our long term, we're coming out of over, overbought and we're in the middle. So we have a little uh, divergence. Our shorter time frames are coming out of oversold into the middle. And our longer time frame monthly is coming from overbought down to the middle. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where we go from here and what happens in December. And of course, what's going to be our catalyst. We'll switch over to the NASDAQ. Come on back to the daily. And zoom on in. And we can see similarly the 200 moving average acting as resistance. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens from here. Uh, our indicators similarly are in the middle of nowhere. Going to the weekly. We can also see our 200 moving average acting as support here, especially around 2400. Uh, and we'll see what happens if we can get back above 2700. Um, but again, the market is in a nice range. Finishing off with our monthly. We again, once again, can see how the last week of November brings our November candle into a nice doji and our 50 moving average acting as support. So, uh, what we have to see again is can we get above these wicks here, which is around 2700-2730? That will allow us to retest the last swing high. But what's going to be a catalyst that gets above these two wicks of October and November? As we begin to look at our market leaders, we're going to start off here with Apple. And we, what we can see with Apple is a couple things. We'll zoom in, zoom in a little bit. We had this range that we were in here for October and November. We've come down. We've tested the 200 moving average. Uh, and remember, this is what we said last week. We said the last time we wicked all the way down one heck of a wick to 200 moving average. The buyers brought it right back. And similarly, this week, we went right on down to the 200 moving average. The buyers have come on in and brought us right back up. And we wicked out. We peaked at the bottom of the previous range. So again, do we have a catalyst that's going to move us into this, this uh, next range? Um, so for Apple, I would say it's sideways up. Uh, we're certainly above our point of control here on the market profile. What about Amazon? Amazon... You can kind of see the same, similar thing, uh, although it's showing some weakness because uh, we've already broken the 200 moving average. And now, just like the market, the market filled at the 200 moving average, and now Amazon's doing that also. So the best I can say about Amazon is sideways, but you can make an honest argument with all these lower highs that it's sideways to down. Google. Google had this very nice gap up here. Um, it was holding on for a while. Eventually, it did basically fill this gap. And then this week, we've come right back up and actually have made a new swing high here. Um, let me go ahead and zoom out for a second here and see where we are. Well, here's 627s, this swing high here from back in July. Um, that's kind of where we're at. So. What's interesting about that is we're starting at the end of the day, volume started to accumulate, and this is coming into a volume resistance here. Point of control does all the way down here at 596. Uh, uh, Google, you have to say sideways up. Uh, the, you could say though, there's we're in a new range. I could easily come in here and draw in uh, where these wicks are here. And we see, well, we closed this just above it. But Google, we would say sideways up. So Apple sideways it down, Amazon down, and Google sideways up. 
Let's go on to Goldman Sachs. And you, we can tell long term that this is certainly down. Zoom in a little bit. And we had a very good month here, but now we've given it all back. And now we're bouncing and unable to close once again at the 50 moving average. So uh, right now we would say Goldman Sachs sideways. I won't say sideways or down because our, our most recent price action is up, but Goldman Sachs at best we will say is sideways. IBM. IBM certainly is strong, very big range between uh, 177 and 190. And we certainly have gone through that range and put in an inverted hammer at the top of this range. So I would say sideways up, but overall, you know, this is another one that's going to say sideways. And again, what we should learn from this is the same question, and that is what's going to move us out of the range? What's going to move us out of the range? Here's Intel. Um, I was watching a little bit tighter range, and this one really should bring it all the way down to here. Okay. Uh, but Intel, we will say sideways. But Mastercard, Mastercard is our best chart. Just beautiful uptrends here. Look at these uptrends. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, you can make some arguments that. Uh, it consolidated for a little bit, but this last move this week really put us in a new high. So Mastercard, we just had to say up. There's our one up. Netflix. Uh, sort of been a downtrend since all that pricing stuff that they've done. Um, and we had one range that we were watching here. And we've tested it, fallen three pattern. Now we're in a new range, moving sideways. Still at 60, but remember, it, it once was 300. So um, Netflix, we're going to say sideways to down. And we'll finish off with Priceline. And Priceline has just been in a huge range. Look at this range. 440 up to basically 550, 100-point range. Just up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, this most recent attempt, we uh, did not actually make it all the way down. And now we'll see what happens here once we get to the 200 moving average, whether or not we can push our way through 500 and get back up to 540. Now we're going to our market sentiment leaders. Uh, we're starting off with the dollar. We know the dollar has that inverse relationship with the market. So there's our lovely uh, September, a week October, strong November. And as we had a strong week here, uh, this last week here is showing some weakness. So, um, yeah, but the dollar, I would say sideways up. Um, we pushed up, made a swing low, pushed up. Although you, you could make an argument that that is a lower high there. Um, dollar definitely uh, sideways, possibly sideways to up. Um, gold <clears throat> was a strong dollar. little weakness in the gold. Of course, gold's been a, a tremendous uptrend. You can see the range where you're in here. Uh, we busted out of that. Now we're in a <clears throat> a new range of about 1660 up to about 1800. Uh, we're putting in a rise in three pattern. Although you can say this is an inverted hammer, so it'll be interesting to see if we can get above 1750 to go back and test 1800. But gold in a range, definitely range bound. And finally, crude oil. Crude oil for a while was in that. We've talked about this range of 96 to 102. Um, it fell out of it, came all the way down, uh, established a new range here in between 90 and 80. Obviously, you can see I like to look at my ranges. I, I find support and resistant range very important. Then we had this beautiful move up back in the range before of 96 to 102, went up. Stopped at the 200 moving average, stopped at 96. Now we're back up here, rising three pattern, back up here at 102. So we'll see what happens if we can finally break out of that. Uh, we certainly don't want it to <laughs> for those of us uh, uh, at the gas pump. But uh, we'll see if the 102 resistance can hold up.
As we come to our education spotlight, we've been talking about trading plans, trading system, trading rules. The last couple of weeks, we've been focusing in on trading rules. And to kind of finish that off, we're just saying that basically our trading rules are our checklist. It's our checklist for each trade, and it helps us establish a procedure for entering and even exiting our trades. And you want to make sure that you go through this checklist each and every time until it becomes natural, until it's no longer necessary, until you're... You know, sort of like we talk about chart patterns where you're able to recognize these patterns and that's why you see virtual trade practice trades so that those pattern recognitions um, become natural. You see the patterns as the market is happening. The well, same thing with trading rules. You want to continue to look at your checklist and go over it time and time again until non it. For some of us, especially those who don't lack, uh, who don't have that uh, strong discipline, you may never get rid of your checklist. You may want to make sure you use it each and every time to make sure that you're not allowing your emotions to get into your decision making. As you know, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are Your Financial Literate, where we go over all personal finance information. We have our free five-part video course on high probability trading. It gives you a way to frame the market so that you can develop your own high probability trading setups. We hope you, it gives you a gauge of who we are as coaches and how we can help you establish your checklist for trading, your trading rules, help you develop that trader's mindset to implement that every day. We have a high probability video trading course. It's, it's um, three separate video uh, uh, courses. One just basically on the introduction to trading, technical analysis, chart patterns, money management. Then we talk about the specific trading plan components, what should be a part of it, and how to frame your trading plan. And then we have a third video where we just talk about different trading setups. And again, the key is to have a setup that matches who you are as a trader. And the reason we're only charging $99 is because we believe it's not systems and indicators that change your trading results. It's trader's mindset. And so we want to make sure that you guys are able to also come back to us and get into our mentorship programs so that we can really change your trading path. If you're going to trade futures, we have a great future trading broker, Intraday Millions, the large is $300, and you can get 20 free trades through us. And charting package uh, works both on PC and Mac. For us Mac folks, that's certainly important. Run your scans to get your latest and breaking moons uh, stocks. As we said, we don't believe it's a system or an indicator that's going to change your trading results. It's developing a trading mindset. It's the plan, it's the system, it's the rules that we implement on a day-to-day -day basis. And you need a trader's mindset so that you can have the confidence and the psychological capital to pull the trigger. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.